you for joining me for episode 13 of My Doll's House Diary. Now in this episode I just want to share with you a few small changes I've made to the kitchen and also tell you about the next couple of furniture tutorials we'll have coming up. I just want to start by telling you about a very small change I'm going to make in My Doll's House kitchen and it's just the drawer pulls and the mixer tap. Now I used the black pulls and the silver mixer tap as I was using this photograph as my inspiration. And this is a photograph from a Laura Ashley catalogue. And as you can see, I've sort of copied the sink unit there and they're using the black pulls and the silver mixer tap. And this is the sort of look I want to go for in my kitchen. So you can see as well, they've got the black arga and this is where I took the inspiration for the um, ceiling beams. And I really like this colour scheme, so these deep reds and creams. But I'm not happy with how the pulls and the silver mixer tap actually looks in situ. And I think because the silver mixer tap is actually quite modern looking. So what I'm going to do is change the pulls and the mixer tap to the antique brass. And those handles should come off fairly easily. And the same with the mixer tap. And I really like antique brass and it looks really nice as well against the cream. Now if you can hear some noise in the background, they're actually trimming trees and hedges outside today. And I've been trying to wait until they go and have a break or something, but it seems they're going to keep going. So I'll, I'll just have to film with that in the background. So I hope it's not um, too much of an awful noise. So the other thing I'm going to do is remake this unit and I'm going to do it in the dark oak. So it's going to be all dark oak. And that's just because we recently went um, to a neighbour's house and they had this fabulous kitchen island which was cream, actually with a pine top. But it was just the sort of thing I want in here. And I thought if I'm going to do, I was going to do the island in the oak, but now I'm going to do it in the cream with the oak top. I think it'll look too much cream and oak in that area. So I thought if I do this in the dark oak, which will match the um, wall unit, which I just took out of there for a moment because the tape on the back um, has dried up so it's not sticking. But that will go there. So I think the oak cabinet here will tie in nicely with that and then it will be a nice sort of light cabinet in the middle there. So I'm going to do that. So I'll remake this cabinet today and then we'll have a look at a design for the kitchen island and I'll show you what I've got planned there. And then I was flicking through Instagram last night and I get an awful lot of furniture adverts um, come up on my little bits and pieces feed which I actually don't mind because it gives you sort of quite a few ideas. And I saw a lovely kitchen bench. I can't find an image online of the sort of thing um, I wanted. So I've done a very rough drawing. So a sort of high backed bench like that, and that would be cream at the top and bottom. And then the um, oak seat part going across there. And then from the side, you've got like this shaped sort of wings at the top and then shaped arm at the front edge there and then these lines are sort of grooves in the actual wood and then some mouldings that you can see the thicker lines there and those also on the seat part so that's the sort of thing i'm thinking of and then above that i would have a really nice sort of wall shelf where we could have some little pots a nice plant and maybe some hooks um, underneath you know the sort of thing i mean yeah, I think that'll look quite nice. And then what I was actually thinking, because I like to include a crocheted throw in each of my rooms, just because I love making them so much, and I thought I could have a little crocheted blanket sitting on there, a couple of cushions, and then maybe one of my shopping bags um, with lots of things in it. Otherwise, I was going to have like a little desk over in that corner and a chair with a crocheted throw hanging over the back but I think a bench would actually look nicer. But the beauty of it is, is that I can make this and then if I'm not happy with how it looks in the kitchen, I can offer this for sale on Etsy. So nothing ever goes to waste and it's good being able to have a look at what it will actually look like in there. So that will probably be the next project, but for now I'm going to get on with removing those kitchen 
drawer pulls and the mixer tap. Okay, so the mixer tap I actually attached with super glue. So what I'm actually going to do is just really sort of gently sort of wiggle that off. I can hear the wood sort of splintering a little bit there. But just really gently and there, that's not really done any damage at all. So there's just a couple of little um, bits of wood peeled off there. So I can just sand the glue away, touch it up with a bit of colour and then put the new tap on once that's dried. And that one I can just again sand the bottom of those and that can be used for another project. So I'll just pop that in my drawer. And then with these drawer pulls I'm just going to use my tweezers and again just really sort of gently pop those off of there. Again, same thing, it's just taken away a little bit of the paint, but the handle is completely reusable. And these are plastic, these little handles, so I'm hoping none of them will crack. Just whenever you're doing anything like this, just be really gentle, don't rush at it. really lovely handles or pulls rather but I do think they look a little bit modern okay so that's that so I'm just going to use a little bit of um, fine grade sandpaper just to remove the glue residue on there same with the sink unit and then I'll touch that up with a little bit of paint Okay, so I've just got a little tiny bit of um, 500 here. And I've sort of folded up so I can just get into that central bit of the drawer. And I'm just sanding away that glue residue. I can still see my little pencil dot there, but that's okay because I can use that to reposition the new handles. That sun is so bright now, it keeps going dark and then brightening up again. And I noticed as well where it's been getting dusty in my doll's house because I've got that front um, open. Some of the sort of dust has got into the wax here and it's not, not got that nice satin finish on it anymore. So once I've glued the new um, tap into place I'll apply another coat of wax. And I could do that again before I put the doors um, back onto the doll's house and don't have to worry about the dust too much. And it just gets richer and richer, so it just adds a really nice um, finish to wood, especially when you're using a wood dye as opposed to a varnish, which obviously has a matte finish. So that's that, and I've done that one as well. And I think I've got some of my mixed, pre-mixed paint left in a little pot, so I'll go and find that. Yeah, so I have actually got quite a bit of that mixed paint left. Just giving it a good stir as a sort of um, layer had started to form on the top there, where I haven't used it for such a long time, but it's still nice and creamy. And I might even have enough there for the bench and the kitchen island, but we'll see. I've got plenty of the other paint if I need to mix some more. Wipe that off. Now, as it's such a small area that I'm working on, I'm just using my detail brush, and that's a number one. I am going to go over the whole of that sort of inside section of the drawer. and that will give a better finish than just going over that patch. The hedge cutters have stopped for a moment. Maybe they've gone off for lunch. I hope so. It's giving me a bit of a headache, that noise. <laughs> it does look nicer out there, though. Right, so I'll pop that to dry in the sun. That won't take long. It 
it really is such a good feeling to be back in my workshop. This is the first time I've been in here actually working for yeah, five, five or six weeks. And as much as I do enjoy editing the book and getting it ready for publishing, it's um, it's just so nice to be back being creative, I suppose. I really want to sort of throw myself into the doll's house now. I'm sort of at that stage where, you know where you sort of, you might wake up in the middle of the night or something and immediately you start thinking of, you know, ideas start popping into your head. And I was thinking about that little bench because I just had a quick look at Instagram before I sort of set the alarm on the on the phone. That's what I was thinking of when I woke before the alarm went off this morning. And I think that's nice. It's nice having lots of ideas, making plans. That's all sort of part of it, isn't it? All part of the hobby. Okay, so that's that one as well. So I'll leave that to dry as well. And I'll start cutting the pieces for remaking the little um, storage unit. Look at that rain out there now. It's pouring. And earlier it was bright sunshine. Okay, so I've cut the pieces that I'm going to need to remake the storage unit and these are just the 1.5mm pieces plus the legs and this makes up just the body of the unit. So I haven't cut the drawers, as I always advise, don't cut the drawers until you've actually constructed the unit and I haven't cut this top piece either and then I find that you can measure um, and get an exact uh, measurement for the top piece so you've just got a little bit hanging over. So I'll pop that there for a moment. Now I'm going to, because I'm going to do the unit in wood dye, in the oak, I'm going to stain these before construction. And it's just because no matter how careful you are with the glue residue um, and sanding that away or moving it with your cocktail stick, you always end up having a little bit of glue somewhere and because the wood dye doesn't take over glue you'll end up with little patches. So if I'm applying wood dye to a whole piece as I'm going to be doing here I like to apply it first so these will need every um, piece here will need to have a really good sand on the actual surface then I can apply the wood dye so I'm going to prepare those in a moment and show you how I do that but the paint is now dry on the sink unit and the drawer unit so I'm going to attach the new handles so I'm again just going to give a really light sand just over the part that I've just painted. Just really gently like that. And that's just to make, make sure I've got a completely smooth surface on there. And then I keep all the handles in this little drawer. And this is a drawer out of my... Um, sort of screw tidy unit that I've got at the side of my desk and I've got a nice sticker on there saying brass handles and it's now just got all types of handles in it so I really need to go through and sort that out. I've got hinges in there, <laughs> um, brass push plates for doors, I've got everything in there now so I need to sort it out but I have got enough of these antique brass pulls for the sink unit and the drawer unit there. So I'm going to take those out. So what do I need? Seven, I need nine. Okay, so I've got my tweezers to actually hold the pull with. And I'll dispense some of my Gorilla Glue here. I'm using a cocktail stick to apply it. And I find that Gorilla Glue, um, it's a wood glue, but because one part is wood, it works fine with these brass pulls. Put on the back there. And then I can still see the little pencil dot that I made when I originally attached the handles. I'll just line that up with that. 
and already I really like how these um, handles look against the green paint. So I'm glad I decided to do this. And it's one of those things, isn't it? If you're not entirely happy with something, you never will be. So instead of thinking, oh, I'll just leave it, do take the time to change it because you'll just never be happy with it. Just pressing that down into place. And the next one. Just lining up the centre of the top of the pull with that little pencil mark. And I always sort of have a look from the front just to make sure it's straight. If you haven't got a very good eye for sort of seeing if things are straight, then always just use your smaller rule just to double check. And I think have because I've done this for so long, my I, I have developed an eye where I can sort of look at something and see if it's straight. But occasionally I do still like to just double check, just to make sure. So I'm just checking that the bottom um, of that handle is the same measurement from there to the bottom of the drawer. And it was 10 millimetres. 10 again, and 10, so that is spot on. And I do think that looks better. I think it's more in keeping with the style of my kitchen as well. And actually, while I've got the sink here, I didn't apply another coat of wood dye because I didn't want to change the colour when I thought about it because this was the two coats of light oak wood dye. And then if you remember, I applied a coat of the dark wood, the, sorry, the dark oak wood dye over the top and wiped it away. So I thought if I put another coat on, it's going to slightly change that colour and I like this colour so I didn't do that but I think after I've applied a coat of wax um, that will look fine and you're not going to see these bits because I'm going to use them as a guide for gluing this one back into place so for this you'll need your super glue because the wood glue won't work um, sticking the brass over wood dye works well over um, the emulsion paint but not over the wood dye. Now I just want a tiny little bit in the centre of that foot there. The same over there. Make sure you've got it the right way around. And then I'm just going to glue it straight over those little patches. Okay, give it a good press down. And I just like to hold that into position as well for 30 seconds or so. And with these taps, try not to press on the actual tap part or the faucet, um, but you can press down on the these the, ha the handles. <laughs> it's a nice sort of strong tap, but the faucet does tend to bend if you press down too hard on it. And if you ever find you get one and the faucet is a little bit off angle, then you can just very gently manipulate it back into um, position so that it's sort of upright and central. Now, I I really like how that looks now. I think it suits the colour scheme better. Okay, so now the draw unit. I'll just pop the lid back on that super glue. Again, I can still see the pencil marks here, and on some of them, actually, the little curve of the glue. So I'll use that for repositioning the new ones. Again, I really like how that looks now. And if I bring the, let's just move you up a little bit, bring the sink in as well. I 
I think that looks a lot better. So I'm going to go and put it back in place and let's see how it looks in situ. So there are the cabinets back in place. And I think just that small change has made a real difference. Okay, so I'm now going to go and start applying the wood dye for the little storage cabinet. Okay, so to prepare these pieces for the wood dye, I'm going to be using a medium grade sandpaper, so a 240 grade. And I'm going to start with the mouldings, and these only need to be sanded on one side, because I'm only going to apply the wood dye to the one side. And just with them flat on your work surface, just give them a really good sand. And I'm going round in small circular motions, but I'm also sort of just going back and forth along the piece. And try and keep the pressure the same all the way along. Just get rid of the dust there. And that's so much smoother and will give you a much better finish. And I would advise doing that whether you're using wood dye, varnish or even paint and that will give a really nice finish. Now, as I'm only painting the one side, like I said, I've got here some masking tape sticky side up on a piece of card, and I'm just going to attach the edges of those on there, and that means then I won't get any of the wood dye on my fingers when I'm applying the wood dye to them. So all of the pieces are now sanded and prepared for the wood dye. I just wanted to mention with the legs, you can sand along the length um, of the legs, but if you've got any of these sort of little um, bits at the end, perhaps where your saw isn't quite as sharp as it should be, then trim them off with a blade rather than sanding them as you'll round over the tops of the legs. So just straight down like that and cut off or cut away those little bits. like that give you a nice flat top and bottom. So for my kitchen units I mixed two of the wood dye colours to find a colour that I really liked and it was basically two coats of light oak and then a coat of dark oak over the top actually applied directly to the furniture um, and then wiped off straight away so that it didn't stain in too much and go too dark um, but it was just a little bit darker than the light oak and that's the colour that I want so I'm going to apply two coats of the light oak now and I've dispensed some here into this little pot and then once the piece is constructed, I'll apply the dark oak top coat and then wipe that away using kitchen towel to leave the colour that I want and which will match the tops of the pieces that are already in there. So I'll pop the dark oak to one side for now. I gave this a really good shake before I tipped it into the pot. And then as I'm working on the pieces, I just occasionally give that a little shake like that um, just to stop the sediment from sinking to the bottom of the pot because that will change the colour. So the pieces here on my card, nice and easy. So I'm just making sure that I've got along each side of those mouldings as well. Otherwise that will be visible once they're in place. like that. And then I'm just going to wipe over each piece with a piece of kitchen towel. So that's then the first coat. I'll now apply the wood dye to the other pieces and then come back and do the second coat. For the other pieces, because I want to paint them on all sides, I've got my latex gloves on. And if you don't like latex, these also come, I think it's called nitrile. They're a little bit more expensive, um, but they'll do the job. And that way I'm not going to get any of the wood dye on my fingers. And then I've got this plastic tray here, and then once I've done the piece, I can just prop it up on there, and it's not going to stick to the tray.
So that's two coats of the light oak on each of the pieces. I'm now going to leave these to dry overnight and I'll construct the unit tomorrow. Now if you'd like to have a go at making that unit, either in the dark oak or in the two-tone um, as was the original, you can find that video in my Doll's House Diary Kitchen tutorials if you just pop up and have a look at the playlists there, you'll find that. Okay, so the bench that I'm going to make is going to sit across this wall here. So I've got my smaller rule here and I just want to get an exact measurement. So I'm going from the skirting board on the right hand edge there because obviously it will sit beside that and up to the edge of the skirting board on this side and that is what's that 112.5 millimeters so just under four and a half inches there now I don't want the bench to sit um, right up to the edges so I'll probably take off the 12.5 millimeters at least so have it sort of a hundred mil and then it can sit right in the middle there the overhead lights just flashed I'm not sure if that's the weather or the head trimming outside which is still going on so I may do it a hundred I could even go down to 95 so I've got a little bit extra on each side there and then for the depth, a seat is usually um, 38 millimetres deep. That's one and a half inches. So that will come out just past um, the chimney breast there, which is fine, just a few millimetres past there. And then I'm not sure of the height yet. I don't want the back to be too high up because I want to get a shelf up here and I probably want the shelf to be in line with the top of the fireplace there. So I'll, I'll go away and work out the height that the bench back needs to be. But probably again looking at about four foot high in real life. So that would be again about a hundred millimetres high. Okay, but the important one was that width. And I think I'm going to go for the 95 millimetres wide. So I've now completed the storage unit in the dark oak colour and I haven't remade the baskets yet but I will do once I've found some fabric for the kitchen and I'm going to remake the ones for the sink as well. And I've just got all the furniture in here now because I'm going to give it all a coat of um, wax just on the wooden parts. So I've just got some clear wax here, and this is actually just clear shoe polish. So I'm using a piece of kitchen towel. And I'm just going to go over the surface in small circular motions. And this wood has actually gone quite dry, so it's just soaking in really nicely there. I'm just trying to angle it in the light so you can actually see the difference between the treated piece and the untreated. I'm trying not to get this onto the paint. It does sort of stain it a little bit or leave a mark. Okay, so all of the pieces have now had a coat of wax, so let's get them back inside the doll's house. And there's the new storage unit in place. And I really like how that looks, I think it ties it all together better and makes that look like a separate unit. I'm going to just pop the old one back in and do a quick merge like that just so you can see what it looked like before. I really do prefer the darker unit. Let's go back to that one. 
So I'm really pleased with these small changes that I've made. Once I've got the fabric I'm going to remake the baskets for this unit and for that one as well because I just used a cream um, sort of linen fabric to line those baskets with. And just before I go I want to show you the designs for that kitchen island I was talking to you about. So hopefully you can see my very sort of rough drawing here. So this will be the front and the part that faces the front or the opening of the kitchen. And this is actually two shelves. So I've got two nice deep shelves there that I'll be able to display um, crockery and cookery books and things like that in. This is then the side that will be facing that wall of units. So that's actually like a little line there. So I've got two drawers. This piece here is the side of this front section. So that will just be filled in. That's a little um, hanging towel rail. This is all open and I've got slats along this bottom here so I can put some um, pots and pans and things in there, some larger items. A couple of opening drawers. The other side will just be the same as that but without the towel rail and that will be the side that then faces the Arga, which is over on that other wall. And then the back is just going to be it's totally out of scale because it will be as wide obviously as the front but the back again will just have a blanked out piece at the top there and then obviously just all open in here and that's those slats going across and I've, I'm going to put wheels on it as well I like the idea of doing that and I'll be doing this as a tutorial as well so hopefully that will be one that you'll be able to use for your own kitchen or room box and as I said it's going to be in the cream and it will have the dark oak wooden top and towel rail and I'll use again probably the antique brass pulls on there I think that will look nice. So the next tutorial coming up will be the kitchen bench and then it will be the kitchen island so do look out for those. Okay so just sort of interim episode there before we start on those next furniture tutorials which I'm really looking forward to making and I hope you found some useful information within the video. I also wanted to tell you that I've ordered a selection of fabric for the kitchen which I'm really looking forward to receiving because then we can start on the door curtain and the window curtains and I also think adding curtains adds a real impact to a room so I'm looking forward to receiving those. Okay so that's it for now, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon, bye!